Hey guys, welcome back to the Outdoor Grow Series. On this episode, we're gonna set up our drying space, creep on our plants like we always do, and I'm gonna throw down some talk about cool gear, where you can get it, and what's coming up in the future, guys. All that and a little bit more on this episode. All right, everybody, so as the Outdoor Grow comes to a close here, you might be wondering, well, where the heck is he gonna dry? like five pounds of weed or whatever it is that we're going to be pulling out of here and i'm going to show you the space that i'm going to be using for that because we're cleaning it up right now so my garage is down there you guys have probably noticed that table sometimes i stand here to do mixes and stuff this is a loft space that my garage has all right and uh, it's unfinished and right now you can take a look at the uh the temperature and humidity right now and this is going to be what we're working with but we're going to put some uh, some fans as you can see down there up here and right now we're cleaning the space okay for any little critters and stuff that might live in here meese and stuff like that all right we're going to clean all the dust out of here all right and then what we're going to be doing is we're going to be hanging trellis curtains between each one of these beams here all right three on each side for a total of six racks all right and we are going to just be hanging these girls right here i'm going to cover up that window all right so we don't get any light leaks guys uh, and i'm going to clean up this floor and organize all this stuff so that when i come in here and do some dry updates you guys see uh you know what's going on here pretty clearly without any of the distraction of the other crap all right so we've got the fan set up all right and this is going to be kind of the walking path between them okay so i've got the two fans sort of facing each other i'm thinking about maybe adding another fan somewhere else in here guys but for now this is this is what i'm willing to afford to try this out all right, and again, it's still 80 degrees in here during the day, but keep in mind, in another two weeks or so, one to two weeks is gonna be much cooler in here, probably by a good five to six degrees. So we're getting closer to our target, and, uh, and again, we'll have everything up on the side here. So uh, we'll take some uh, updated video in a couple of days when all that other stuff comes in, uh, and it's all set up. All right, everybody, we've got a new week here. It is Sunday morning. Uh, the week that these girls are going to go into week eight of flower and that's going to be just in a few days but we're going to capture some video now on this beautiful sunny day it's going to be about 75 76 degrees today and mostly sunny and the girls are loving life out here guys let's take an update tell you a little bit about what's been going on the past few days all right well here's our uncle poco all right i'm going to show you guys uh, where i grabbed that uh that bud rod off of right remember this little bud here all right, so this stick had two buds out here. There was one here, then that was the mushy one. And then there was a big nug here, right? Kind of like one of these big solid end buds, just like this, perking up right towards the sun, right? And what I did was I had clipped that nug off and I waited to see which way the botrytis went. Was it gonna go this way? Was it gonna go that way? And it went out towards the end of the stem. All right, so we lucked out, I think, and uh, we don't longer have that botrytis problem up in here, guys. Uh, everything looks pretty normal, uh, and I'm happy with what I'm seeing, and these nugs are looking great. Now, I pulled trichomes off of these girls uh, just yesterday, actually on Saturday, the end of uh, the seventh week, which really was the middle of their seventh week of flower since technically they got flipped on a Thursday. <laughs> it seemed that they started to flower on a Thursday anyway. Uh, all this, guys, is just estimates, you know? Uh, but roughly, this is week seven slash eight, right? It will be the end of week eight by the time you uh, see this video, or the, the sort of halfway point of week eight by the time you see this, the end of this video. Uh, and these girls look uh, absolutely amazing. They are about 5% clears, about 5%, 10%. Uh, well, actually, it's more like 5 to 10% clear, about 5-ish percent amber, and the rest is cloudy so we are in the pipe guys for harvest pretty much any time we want based on how potent i want it to be so i'm gonna let these sun-grown girls probably go till maybe the first week of october uh, but we'll see i don't like there to be too much amber especially on my gdps on my indicas i, I don't like them to be too couch locky but i do want this flower to bulk up somewhat more and i think it does have the potential to do that see those a lot of there's white pistols there, there's white hairs. I want those to be filled out a little bit more, uh, or at the very least, curl in uh, a little bit more. And you can see the purples here, guys, right? And that granddaddy purple is showing off her phenotype. She's like, hey man, I am purple. Just take a look at that. Look at how purple that all is. It's freaking amazing, guys. I love it. I could not be more content with how purple these buds look. Look at this. 
Look at that purple girl. I love this, guys. I love this. Look at this. I didn't know that this was going to happen to this extent because when we grew this girl last time, she did not change color. All right. It was in a very controlled environment. Uh, there wasn't any big temperature fluctuations, nothing like that. She had no reason, I guess, to express her pheno. But now she's got every reason to express her pheno. It was 49 degrees a couple of nights ago overnight. So, uh, but these girls have been changing color since way before that when it started getting down into the 60s. And look at these beautiful, beautiful colas, guys. This is my thumb for comparison. This is an end bud. Look at how thick that bud is. That's like an inch across, uh, about inch and three quarters, two inches tall. It's huge. And look at the top colas, guys. I should get a soda can out here, right? So that you guys can see, compare that because that's kind of a standard unit of measurement. You can see some little spider webs in there and I'm okay with little spiders hanging out here, guys. They won't be around too much longer because we're gonna bud wash. Uh, one of the places I found bud rot was right there yesterday. See, there's kind of a gap here. I cut off a piece there, so that spiral got broken. Uh, and all around it, it looks like it's mostly okay. There might be another spot of botrytis in there that I need to look for or look at, but I think it's mostly all right. Nope, that's gonna probably get cut out too, actually. So I'm gonna come out here with some shears in a little bit, cut that out too, because it sounds like, or it seems like uh, an adjacent bud also got affected. But for the most part, the, uh, the plant is okay. And because I come out here and check these plants multiple times a day, I've been ahead of it. So anytime I see botrytis, it's literally, it's something that has obviously been there for a little while, but has just started to come out of the center of the bud and I'm identifying it immediately. And I look at all these buds, guys, constantly, throughout the week, multiple times a day, to make sure my crop is going all right. Now this Moby Dick has required a great deal of attention over the past, I'd say two weeks, because she has continued to be super bushy. And even though I got rid of the vast majority of these fan leaves, she's grown out other ones <laughs> even longer. Uh, and it's not that they're new growth or anything like that, all right? It's that the, the stem part of the leaf has extended outwards to reach further sun. Uh, and I really wish she would just focus on fattening the bud. But this is what this genetics does, all right? And you can't fight the genetics, all right? But because of the way that these buds stack, I have to look underneath these leaves every single day and brush every one of these up. My hands get super duper sticky. Uh, but I always give them a visual observation first before I put my hands on them. Okay, because if you touch anything, you're then going to spread it to other parts of the plant. So I try not to get my hands too dirty until I've given it kind of a visual observation and seen where there's any potential issues. So there was a couple of, uh, it wasn't on this cola specifically, I don't remember which one it was, but it was somewhere in here where there was kind of, you know, where the spiral is here, there was a botrytis in the center of the stem. So honestly, not so great. It could go up, it could go down. I don't know yet. And we're going to see over the course of this week how that's gonna go uh, but I think yeah like see like right in here I cut I cut this stem out or this uh, butt out and this butt out because this was those bud rot here so see there's kind of a big gap now and a stick there you can see the stem uh, but that's what you got to do guys you got to cut it out you can't save it you know I've sprayed these girls multiple times now uh, with Lost Coast uh, and I was doing the one to three days and I sprayed them about four times now this one in particular got a full soak the other two girls have gotten partial soaks well couple of times they got a full soak but the other day this one got a partial soak because uh, they saw that botrytis up there um, but yeah it's just really just trying to stay ahead of it all right whenever you see a discolored leaf like this that's something that should also draw your eye okay look look we're gonna see in there see that brown that's gonna have to get cut out that's botrytis so that's a big indicator guys when you see something change color like that it means you got to pay attention to it so I'm gonna come out here with the shears cut this little bits off hope that we save everything else and that's it, guys. This is the, the sort of maintenance of the outdoor stuff, all right? It gets big, it gets uh, bushy, but you got to take care of it as best you can by cutting out all this crap that you guys, uh, you know, that comes about because of weather. You, you can only reduce and limit things so much, you know, you can't help the rain come in. Uh, you can cover them up, I guess, and do stuff like that. You can train them out to increase uh, the airflow. But look, this plant, look at how much airflow there is. This plant, look at how much airflow there is. Still got botrytis. So, so no matter what you do, Sometimes it's inevitable, guys, and because of the pests and everything else, you know, you can only control so much. It's an outdoor environment, doing the best we can. And I think overall, we've done a pretty good job with this, guys.
you'll have to tell me in your comments, all right? But uh, this is really just the start of this week, guys. No more feeds going on here. I don't think we're going to let these girls ride out and probably do a little fade uh, and then butter wash them in a couple weeks. So, all right. Hope you guys enjoyed this first clip. Well, guys, it's raining out there today, so we're not shooting any video, but I was out there picking some uh, bits of bud rot out. So two or three more buds came off there, and I'm just hoping that we make it through the next couple of weeks without uh, too much more incident, guys, because I'm getting a little worried. All right, guys, so after a very, very lengthy period of rain here, uh, these girls have bounced back, and they're nice and dry. All right, it's about 11 o'clock on Tuesday, about 48 hours really since you've seen them. Uh, although you did get that shot of the rain in the last clip and these this Moby Dick which is a nine week finisher looks like she's getting to the end here she's got a little more growth to go and uh, we did find a couple of spots of bud rot this morning uh, on this plant one that uh, was well both spots weren't really that far along I caught them pretty early you know like the leaf was basically just starting to yellow slightly and I saw a little bit of brown at the base of the bud and uh, I cut it out. Cut both of them out, washed up, and I think I'm gonna be giving these girls another treatment today, uh, later in the day once dusk comes about. It's not gonna be 80 degrees today, but I don't like to spray stuff when they're gonna have direct sunlight on them. But guys, some of these buds are looking really good. Look back here, right? That's a, that's a fantastic looking bud. All right, nice and brown, that one's pretty mature. The stuff here at the top, not as mature, and it kind of varies based on uh, where it is located on the plant. Although, with as evenly distributed as this plant is, it really shouldn't be. You know, everything should be about the same uh, basic grow uh, age, but you'd be surprised, guys. Some parts of the plant just take a little longer to grow, maybe because the stem's a little longer, they're slightly further from the root system, something like that. And even though this is mainlined, Keep in mind that these girls created a, a really interesting branching structure, right? So this is like a whole branch, right? It looks kind of like a little auto flower. Like every one of these these uh, colas is like its own little auto flower, right? Like you get like one or two ounces off like each one of these, basically. Um, but yeah, that's the Moby Dick. She's looking good. Color starting to come out. Lots of orange. Let's go over to the GDP, who uh, got hammered with that rain, guys. She is. She had a couple of pieces of a bud rot on the underside on that side of the plant uh, that I found when I was lifting everything up this morning, or not this morning, but on uh, Sunday after we had filmed, I found a couple little spots, but look at that purple guys, look at these buds. They're looking amazing, really, really good. Uh, and the plant generally, overall, is really healthy. She's still kicking out that orange, uh, or that grape flavor, grape soda scent, I should say. Really liking that a lot. All right, and I know a lot of these are over underturned because they've been rained on and so the rain kind of weighed on them but I was out here last night at 11 o'clock at night like a crazy person with my leaf blower on the lowest setting so I didn't disturb anybody <laughs> and I was blowing the water off these girls because I knew it was going to be a human night but that every little bit counts if I could get you know a lot of the water off these plants they could start to dry up a little sooner even though it was a bit humid last night and I think it matters. I think it matters. You know, we've cut a lot of bud rot out of this uh, particular cola, guys. I'm sure you can see it in there. Lots of empty space. Uh, that's been a concern. Uh, any of the stuff in the middle here has been a concern since we had that accident because none of these things stand up straight unless I have them all tied in, tied up and stuff. You see all those twisty ties in there and that garden wire? I've had to do all that multiple times over and over again between these videos to keep these plants from either uh, preventing them from completely leading over uh, and touching each other, you know, and it's been a trial because the wind continues to blow, as you can see even in this video. And, uh, you know, sometimes it picks up and it blows stuff all over the gosh darn place, guys. And it's, it can be a real hassle to keep it all uh, set. But look, this is the product that I'm dealing with, guys. And I, I'm really, really content with that. Really content with that. We're going to have about three days of just sunshine, it seems. And Friday's going to be partly cloudy or mostly sunny something like that I don't know we don't know yet three days out is too far <laughs> but uh, looking forward to the good weather and his Acapulco is is too I shook off the last remnants of water from her this morning by just shaking these bamboo stakes uh, because she has connected to one each one very intimately as you can see uh, and that's why she did so darn well during that big storm and of course the middle stuff here is still a little floppy here and there you know it's still even though I reshape it periodically like it's still very top heavy and it doesn't always stand up straight 
you know, and it leans over on things, and that's that's kind of problematic. <clears throat> but here's what one of these buds looks like, guys. All right, we'll get you a nice Acapulco bud there. All right, this will be good shots for the Instagram as well. Which, if you guys aren't following, maybe you should think about it. You should think about checking out the Instagram, guys. I put uh, photos on there periodically, not just of the outdoor grow, but every now and then I'll do some of the autoflower grows too. Uh, that series is about a month different from what you see in the videos, you know, so the stuff you're gonna get. Uh, this upcoming Friday is from about three, four weeks ago, right? And uh, yeah, so I don't put too many of the autoflower pictures on there because I, I want it to be a bit of a surprise when you guys watch the videos, but every now and then I'll give you a sneak peek of what's going on. All right, and this Acapulco, guys, talk about sneak. This is a surprise, man. Look how beautiful these buds are, guys. Beautiful these buds are. I'd love to hear from you guys if you think these are done, but uh, I'm gonna check the trichomes probably Thursday, I would say, another two days. And guys, this might be, uh, I don't know, we might be harvesting sooner than later, because look at this bud. Look at this bud. I know there's a lot of white hair still in there, right? Talking about age of plant stuff. But I gotta say, this Acapulco, man, she looks like she'd be ready. She'd be ready. And she was about 80 percentish or so uh, uh, cloudy. So I know that they're nearing the finish line. I just want to make sure the vast majority of the plant is uh, is there before I make any pretty major decisions here. I don't really like this. Oh, look at that. Let's see if we can't bend and shape this one a little bit here, guys. Right? A little bit. Nah, this one's been bent over for so long. It's and so bud heavy. Look at all that bud on this thing, guys. It's just leaned over so much, man. It's hard to uh, to keep them all facing upwards. And you see that leaf right there? We're gonna have to look at that, see if there's bud right there. All right, let's take a look. Let's take a look. I don't see anything. I don't see anything. May just be senescence, but I'll take a closer look when the video's off, guys. But we're gonna be back for probably another segment or two this week, guys. I hope that you are enjoying this series. Uh, and you have been the whole time. Tell your friends, like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff, guys. But uh, we'll see you in a couple of days. Chill. We're back here in the loft space. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be putting up our trellis netting. Uh, and what we're going to be sus suspending that from is this nylon rope. So I've got some cable ties and stuff like that. I'm going to try to get it all set up so that you guys can see what it looks like. And hopefully this setup works again. First year I'm doing this. So if you guys get any tips for next time... Let me know, but this is what my my brain came up with this year. So I'm going to set up the tripod so you guys can watch me set it up. And we'll just uh, see how it goes. All right, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to be running a rope that goes above and underneath these three beams that you can see, guys. Uh, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to take five-foot pieces of trellis netting and I'm going to hang them over and use cable ties to keep them in place. I think that's going to work, but I won't know until it's done. So maybe we'll do a little bit of a time lapse here. You guys can laugh at this as it goes if it's not working out. All right, so what I've done is I've made a really taut line, all right, across and around these two uh, these stanchions are these beams here, and then I've added a slip knot here, and that allows me to add more tension, slip this knot up, add more tension, slip it up. So I can adjust this as time goes on in case this gets a little too loose. All right, so I think that's going to work. I'm going to do it on the other side as well, and then I'm going to show you guys how I'm going to hang the trellis netting right across. All right guys, so I'm gonna start on this side and I'm gonna be hanging the trellis net for you. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drape it over the top line here, all right? And then I'm gonna secure it to this line, both sides of the net like that, to kind of sandwich it in place with these black twisty ties. And I've got a whole bunch of these pipe cleaners. So we're gonna go straight across and uh, we'll do a little time lapse maybe as, we're, uh, as we get it done. All 
Okay, so we've got the first layer up here, guys, and, and that's pretty good, all right? We're gonna continue at it all the way across, see how we do. All right guys, so it's done, all right? So I, I kind of left it as a single trellis net on this side, but when I did this side, I had a little bit of trouble uh, figuring that out again. So I just snipped it right down the middle. Doesn't really make a big difference, guys, but uh, this is what we got, all right? So hopefully we're gonna be hanging stuff kind of across from each other. So the Acapulco might go here, you know, and then the GDP will go between these two beams here. And then lastly, we'll put the Moby Dick right up front. All right, and then we're gonna have these fans on. We're gonna make sure they're not blowing directly on here. I may have to like face them down towards the ground a little bit, lean them against something. Uh, I don't know how I'm gonna do that just yet, but once we get the butt in here, I'll figure it all out. It'll be a little more clear, but this is the setup, guys. I hope uh, it's sufficient for you guys. You know, it's like that stoner engineering stuff, right? We gotta figure out what to do with the space we got, guys. So uh, hopefully this will work. And uh, after we bud wash and stuff, this is where we'll be hanging stuff and we'll, uh, we'll get more video done, all right? All right, good morning, folks. It is Thursday and it's been a little while since we've seen these plants. So uh, let's take a look at them out in the nice sun that we're getting here today. And I think we got some rain coming this weekend, but no big deal. All right, so if you guys don't check out CLTV, you should, because they've got some cool stuff like this. Uh, as well as some other content creator channels. But uh, we'll talk about that in another video, actually. Let's take a look at these girls right now. All right, so I haven't given them a look over yet today, so I gotta go on the hunt for Botrytis and any other problems here, guys. But look at this Acapulco. She looks great. Now, Mike over at Pirate Border says he's gonna be chopping his girls in the next 10 days. I just had a little brief comment exchange with him on Reddit in the Outdoor Growing Sub. Uh, and some other guys also that I spoke to are going to be chopping in the next 10 days. And I think that that is a really good idea. So if it's not coming down this weekend, it's coming down next weekend, probably Saturday. Uh, and that's going to be a big project because my wife normally helps me with the harvest. But she's going to be at an event. So I'm going to have to do this on my own or maybe <laughs> get a friend involved or something. Uh, because that is going to be a process to get all of this down. Uh, on top of that, as we look at these buds here. I believe the Moby Dick is going to be a little further behind, so she may need another week. She may need another week, guys. When we get over there, we'll take a look. But you can see these nice full buds here in the Acapulco. This girl is ready to go. I checked their trichomes yesterday, and yeah, we're talking about almost everything is cloudy now, with very little exception, very little exception. Maybe the stuff like down here that I'm checking, this stuff is a little lighter, but even that, still mostly cloudy. So ambers are all over the place, guys. Just look at this beautiful bud. It's unreal, unreal. Beautiful. All right, let's look over at the GDP, guys. All right, this one is the has been giving me some small issues lately. I've found a little bit of bud rot on her, as well as the Acapulco. And uh, you know, it's uh, affected the way the plant sort of looks, but only in the center stuff. The stuff on the outside here that gets plenty of sun that dries up really quick, not a problem at all. Look at that purple crowned bitch. She is amazing. 
amazing, guys. And as they get late in the season, you know, they're picking up all these little stuff on the fan leaves and crap, and oh, I just don't like it. I don't like it. But it's because the plants are getting older. They're getting older, you know? A couple more weeks they sit out here, and you're gonna see senescence kick in. They're gonna start turning. Probably leaves are gonna start dying off, that kind of stuff. But right now they are beautiful and healthy, and this one is purple as heck, as you can see. And when I download these videos, uh, I try to download them as high, high quality as I possibly can so that you guys can see all of these wonderful, beautiful colors, but sometimes they don't come out. And uh, I'm sure you can see this big gap here. That's where we had bud rot on, uh, on that particular cola, and nothing above or below seems to be affected. So I got at it pretty quick. You know, once you see like a little leaf withering or something like that, that is a telltale sign <clears throat> that it is on the way out. But you don't always see the dried up dead leaves because they fall off, you know, wind and stuff like that. So you've got to be hands on with this stuff, guys. I come out here with gloves on two to three times a day to look at this stuff and keep ahead of it. And the moment I see it, guys, it gets eliminated. I don't always catch it in the morning. Sometimes in the afternoon I come out and did a little better look uh, and it works out a little better because you see how the light's so bright here in the morning? It can be tough to get a really good look on the brown spot stuff, but I do my best. Here we go with the Moby. I can already see something going on right here. You see that black leaf right there? Something going on there, guys. So when we pull it back, you see that bud rot? You see that rot right in there? Yep, yeah. see? It just takes one little leaf like that for you to notice. So I'm gonna leave it there. I'm gonna grab my scissors. I thought I had them in my pocket. I don't. I've been bringing them out every day to get rid of that bud rot so it does not spread. But that's how easy it is to spot sometimes. You see a leaf and it's like, oh boy. See that spot right there? That was bud rot too. And I cut it all out. I had to actually cut about three or four buds off create a big separation there. And it's okay. It's okay, guys. It's the inevitability of growing outdoors. Uh, you know, I, I shake the crap out of my plants when it rains. I come out here with the, uh, the dryer. Oh, turns out I did have them just in a different pocket. <laughs> I, I shake the crap out of the, the uh, rain and stuff like that. Get it right off there, you know, bring out the leaf blower, dry these girls off. Even if it, it's going to rain like in the morning and the afternoon, I'll come out and leaf blow them in between. I don't care. Any amount of water you keep off these girls for any, any amount of time, especially in high humid weather, seems to have an impact. Because I tell you, without any proper maintenance here, if I had done nothing, I'm pretty sure that this crop would be super screwed. Super screwed. Can't leave these plants unattended especially when they are this large and in such a humid region of the states like the Northeast of America. Trying to get you guys some nice shots here. I've got to head in and talk to some clients in a few minutes, but I felt like I'd come out here, guys, while it's sunny. Get you guys uh, some video here. This plant's looking really good. I'm gonna cut off that bit of bud rot. I don't have my gloves on right now. But I'm going to be really careful and just remove that one bit there, guys. And that's it. So, hopefully, in the next uh, eight to nine days, these girls are going to be coming down. And then uh, we will have so much to do. <laughs> Bud wash, carry stuff up to the loft, get it on the, uh, the nets, all that stuff. It's going to be lots of work. But uh, I'm looking forward to it, seeing how it turns out. And I'm going to be really, really on this dry as much as I possibly can because I want this stuff to turn out good, guys. But I really appreciate you checking in, guys. We're nearing 400 subs. Tell your friends, like, comment, subscribe, guys, because what you're about to see uh, is, uh, yeah, in a week or so, is whew, big old harvest. And I hope that uh, you enjoy it as much as I'm gonna. So we are expecting uh, a bit of a rainstorm here the next couple of days, guys. Uh, but it's not as bad as it was initially forecasted to be. So I have let my girls ride this one out. I probably could have chopped them. It would have been maybe a little soon. Um, but I'm glad I'm right, letting it right out because we're, again, like I said, we're getting a lot less rain than I thought. So let's just take a quick peek at these girls so I don't, before I get, uh, you know, too wet out here. All right, guys, beautiful light for these girls. You can really see their nice color. All right, we're hoping to get through the next couple of days of this rain here, guys. Unscathed, no extra bud rot, nothing crazy, hopefully. And I have sprayed these girls with Lost Coast Plant Therapy ahead of time just to inoculate them a little bit, give them a little protection from any molds or mildews that might be coming in this rainstorm, guys. Uh, but again, not too hands-on right now because it's really, really wet out here. 
and that's our Acapulco. Here's our beautiful GDP soaking in the rain. All right, she loves the rain. She loves the outdoors, guys. This plant was really bred by someone in the outdoors and is magnificently growing and thriving here in the Hudson Valley where she was born. And man, she is chunker. And I'm hoping that uh, we don't lose any anything. You see that stem where there was that bud rot there, guys? You see how that stem is nice and green now? Healed that fungus back to fungus uh, infection right up, guys. No problem, right? Lost Coast Plant Therapy. I sprayed the crap out of that area every time I applied it. And uh, it has uh, defeated the, the bud rot. I also got to it soon enough, I guess, that it didn't spread. So that's the GDP, guys. And the Moby Dick, she got quite a haircut yesterday. I got rid of basically any fan leaves that were touching other places. I got rid of a few bud rot spots. That was a bit of bud rot on above, the very tip of that. So I got rid of that, cut about an inch below. So it's got kind of a flat top now, but there was uh, another bit of bud rot somewhere in there, but I got rid of it as well. And this little place where there was rot earlier has also healed up pretty well. No, uh, no extra signs of stress or anything like that above or below. It's really, really healed up nicely. All right, and this girl, she's catching up, man. She, I thought she was gonna be like a whole nother week, uh, even after this week, but no, I think she's gonna be done on time. She's supposed to be a nine week grow and her ninth week is coming up. So yeah, starts uh, pretty soon. And you can see how developed this particular buds are on the Moby, right, right up here at the top. She's got nice fans, nice brown hairs, right? Beautiful spiral structure, very bushy. But ultimately, kicking butt, guys. Any of these spots where you see an opening there, all that was bud rot, and I got rid of all that stuff, guys. Usually a couple of nugs above and below uh, as well. And, uh, you know, you got to remove stuff like this leaves and crap. That's it, guys. All right, we're going to hopefully get through this, and uh, we'll check in after the rain's done, probably Monday, because we're definitely going to get more rain tomorrow than we are getting today. Today's about a third of an inch, tomorrow a little more than half. But we're going to survive it, guys. We're going to survive it. These buds are going to pull through, they're going to be beautiful, and we're going to be harvesting them, hopefully at the end of the next video segment, guys. So stay tuned to that, all right? In the meantime, enjoy your week, your weekend, whenever you're watching this, guys. Be well. Stay lifted.